Hey everyone, welcome back to the Keto Server Fundamentals playlist. In the previous video, we covered routing in details, including topics like nested routing, type sec routing, query and path parameters. In case if you missed it, check out the link in the video's description. Today we are diving into handling request payload data in Ketor. First we will explore how to handle text data in Ketor. Next we will dive into processing data in chunks using the byte read channel. We will also see how to work with JSON data using Kotlin X serialization. And finally we will cover file uploading demonstrating three different approaches for handling and processing file efficiently. Now to handle text data let's create a route let's say post post request with path of grid and let's assign a variable name to whatever we receive whatever text we receive then we can simply respond with a greeting message let's say respond text with hello followed by name let's run the application now it's a post request in path grid let's go in the body section we can select raw then we can select the text and here let's say we enter ketor and let's run as you can see whatever text we entered over here we are able to receive using this receive text function next let's handle data with byte read channel for that let's create a post request and let's say path is channel within here let's say channel equals call dot receive channel you can see the type it's a byte read channel so now we can read the data in chunks like let's say text equals channel dot read remaining dot read text so using this we can simply respond text with this text now let's quickly rerun the application and let's say it's channel portland back in walk and let's hit the run as you can see whatever text is we entered over here we receive them in response this is more efficient as it doesn't load entire data into memory and it handles uh, data in chunks this becomes more handy when the data is in large like it's a large file data then it become more handy now let's move to the file uploading portion the way file uploading works is pretty simple like let's create a route uploads first we basically create a file within the server file system so let's say file let's say let's give a path let's say we want to store within uploads folder and within this we need to specify the file name as well we can get this file name from request data but for now i am hard coding this to sample.jpg also we'll need to make sure that this folder exists so for that we can say parent file dot make mk dirs so what this will do is it will search for this upload folder if it doesn't exist then this will make sure to create one so now we have the file now what we need to do is we'll need to get the 
byte array from the request so for that the first way is by using uh, let's say the byte array equals call dot receive we can use this receive and then say byte array and we can simply say file dot write bytes and pass this byte array now in response we can simply say call dot response upload file file upload success so what we are doing here is we are basically creating a file then from the request we are receiving the byte array then next within this file uh, we are writing this byte array so that this file whatever we receive as a request will be stored in this location in server so for let's quickly run the application now let's say upload then within this body we can select binary for the file and let's choose a file i'll choose this one so as soon as we hit it's a file upload success now let's see what in this has been done so if you notice there is this uploads folder in the same folder uh, in the same level where we have this source directory and build directory there below you can find the uh, uploads since we are uh, storing this within the uploads and we have named the file as sample.jpg so we successfully uploaded the file to our server so now let's discuss about two more ways to write files to the server as you can notice that this byte array if file size is large it will hold entire uh, it will take large amount of memory so this becomes pretty inefficient for large file so for that let's discuss one more approach let's say uh, we can receive file as a stream as well so call dot receive stream so using this as you can see we receive file as an input stream so now what we can do is we can create file output stream and pass this file also now we can use this to efficiently close a file when uh, after using we can say output stream now we can simply say stream dot copy to then pass our output stream so output stream also we can add some buffer size so that uh, it becomes memory efficient in case of large files so we can let's say we keep size buffer size of 16 kilobytes and then that's it i guess that should be it now let's quickly rerun the application before rerun let's give it a new name let's say sample one so that we can differentiate now i am uploading the same image and it's a file upload success and as you can see our file is uploaded to our server so in this method it is efficient than earlier since we are making use of uh, input stream instead of byte array which was which was holding the entire data in memory now this is memory this will consume less memory than earlier method but we can go one more step ahead 
as we discussed earlier we had something like a byte read channel this is more efficient than uh, this this two method so for that let's receive the file as a channel so we can say channel equals call dot receive channel now we can simply say channel dot copy and close so that it will close efficiently and we can say file dot write channel so using this channel it becomes more efficient since uh, we are receiving the file in chunks so once we receive any chunks it will start to write the uh, received uh, chunks to the file and as soon as it uh, finishes uh, all the bytes writing all the bytes then it will close it will release all the resources so now let's quickly rerun the application we can also say sample 2 and again rerun the application let's send and as you can see we have successfully uploaded this image as well so that's it for file uploading portion now let's get started with json object handling so for that we will be using kotlin x serialization plugin and to install the plugin let me show version catalog file we'll need this two dependency these two modules and this plugin over here and then we can simply add them within this plugin section for the plugin and these two dependencies you can either pause the video and type them manually or you can refer to the github repository so now let's create a data class for the json object representation for that we will be using a serializable annotation let's say we want to create a product object we want to represent a product uh, it will have a property name of type string also category of type string and price of type integer so now let's suppose we will we want to create a route for creating a new product so for that let's say we'll name it the path to product we can receive product using call dot receive either we can use receive or receive now label we can prefer this receive nullable as it gives us ability to handle nullable case so we can say receive nullable product and in case it is null we can simply return and respond with bad status code call dot respond with bad bad request status code so now we can simply respond this product respond product oops not the respond text we can say respond and that's it we can run the application and let's say we will call it product then within raw we can select the json and we will say name is orange category will be fruits and for price we can set it to 100 so now let's make post request and as you can see like when we uh, pass a uh, json object what our this receive null level will do it will receive the product object and use making use of this serializable plugin see kotlin x serialization 
it will convert it to product type like product data class and when we respond that uh, with this product what this product will get converted to again json object like this is json object this is not the data class so it is all possible due to kotlin x serialization plugin so for quick recap we today looked into receive text function to receive the raw text value we use cha receive channel it is of type uh, read byte channel byte read channel and it basically uh, process the request data in chunks so that um, less memory will be consumed and for file upload we discussed three approach one using byte array since it is not uh, better for large file since it will consume lot of memory for large file we also discuss about input stream so making use of input stream and uh, buffering we made it uh, able to handle some files but we can go one more level up we also discuss about channels this make use of read byte channel which is more memory efficient as it process the data in chunks lastly we also discuss about handling json objects like how serialization plugin can handle so that's it for this video in the next video we'll be discussing more about uh, form data and multi-part form data so until then thanks for watching and happy coding